Hi folks, this is Brian, aka B-Funk Phenomenon, zooming in on the splits. What you're about to see here is a bilateral 8-count riff consisting of a small variety of splits, rolling forward, rolling backwards, and concluding with an oblique variation, to absorb the kinetic energy that is generated while traveling from side to side. So let me first count a sequence to help you out to see what's going on, and then we'll take it from there. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Then the other side. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So that means we're rolling forward, then we turn around, roll backwards, stop, roll forward, then we make a little pre-swivel on the back wheels of the front skate to flow into the oblique split. And then we reset. Backwards, stop, forward, swivel, oblique split, and stop. Now I'm not going to discuss this sequence in detail, so that explains the angle and the distance of this video. But I do want to address the basic principle of the split technique on micro level. And when I say micro level, I mean literally going down on skate level and zooming in on the mechanics of the ankle joint. So the reason for zooming in on micro level is because of the numerous people I've encountered who have seriously injured themselves practicing this move in, well, let's just say, not in the safest way possible. In fact, it's not uncommon for people to give up skating altogether because of wrongfully executing these splits, being ill-advised about it or just not being mindful with it. And that opens up the door to a host of problems that can seriously affect your daily functioning on and off wheels. And we don't want to have that. So let's take a look. Split drills take a tremendous toll on the calf muscles. So a good and deep preparation is absolutely a good thing to do. But that's where we already encounter our first challenge. And that is that the feet are pretty stuck in the skate boot. Meaning flexing and stretching the toes is practically impossible, which has an effect on how the muscles work together and the limitations this brings about. So make sure to do a decent warm up of the calf muscles before proceeding any further. Six wheels on the floor, pulling the toes towards your shin and leaning a little forward will give you that nice and controlled stretch. The heel-toe split consists of two elements, executed at the same time. With the front skate the toes are pulled up. The rear skate pushes the toes down. In this technique, pulling the front toes up is more of an active movement than pointing the toes down of the rear skate, which is basically a passive result of getting in that split position. The hips are pushed forward, the upper body is straight up, and most body weight is in the front leg. Pulling the toes towards the shin is essential for stability when taking on a split position. This so-called dorsiflexion should be done as far as your ankle allows it. Any degree less will make your stance unstable. Bringing the dorsiflexion to the end range makes the calf muscles stretch to their maximum length. And that's something that doesn't go unnoticed. We use dorsiflexion when we walk as we push off from the ground. When there are limitations in dorsiflexion, the body compensates naturally, which sometimes causes problems elsewhere. People can have different end ranges, caused by a variety of reasons. Could be genetics, or scar tissue in the ankle joint, or tight calf muscles causing restrictive movement, or even hip and lower back problems. Roller skating and split drills are a good way to address and improve poor dorsiflexion, because ankle issues can cause a lot of problems upstream, even all the way to the neck and the shoulders. So pull them toes up as far as you possibly can. Lifting the toes halfway up is not a good way to do this, as it causes problems in the calf muscles and in the knee joint. When you have hypermobility in the knee joint, meaning you easily overstretch the knee joint, you should be extra cautious to correct form and aligning the upper body the right way. Don't lock the knee, but don't bend it either. Relax the joint as you fully pull the toes up. So let's take a quick look at the muscle anatomy of the lower leg so you have an idea of what's going on there.
We start with the bone structure, and we can identify the front side by the kneecap or patella on the top. Now what I'm going to do next is pointing out the key players involved in dorsiflexion. The first one is a big one, the tibialis anterior, covering a large part of the shin bone, or tibia. Next up is the digitorum longus, extending to all four toes, for extra pulling power. And with the hallucis longus reaching out all the way to the big toe, there you have it, a winning combo for a powerful dorsiflexion. On the back side, it's a little less complicated. Let's take a look. We have two main key players. The soleus right here is one of them as the first layer. Then we have this strange little string, which is, by the way, not number two, and I'll tell you why. This muscle doesn't have significant importance, and is even absent in about maybe 10% of the population. But it can be there, and it can be injured, and cause a lot of problems. So, still worth mentioning, just so you know, there is a possibility this muscle is running a room in your leg. Back to the soleus, layer number one, which is covered by layer number two, a pretty big two-headed muscle called the gastrocnemius. And it's exactly these two layers where you will feel that aforementioned stretch and the burn from it as you get into those repetitive heel split drills. I personally like that burning feeling, especially the day after. It really gives you a sense of having done a meaningful and effective workout and gives you a very good reason to skip a few days to rest, recover and digest. Sticking to the basic heel-toe split stance for a while will help you to build a good foundation. Then, before progressing to other variations, first I suggest you play around with tempo changes and slight changes in sequences, going more random instead of fixed patterns. This will massively increase your adaptive capability and creativity. You gotta make sure to break out of fixed patterns in time and frequently, for they will inhibit your free flow and will eventually keep you in a small loop of a limited vocabulary of moves. And this is obviously not beneficial at all to developing free flow motion. So after the basic heel toe split, we have a whole bunch of splits to spice up your flow. Let's see, we have the full heel split and full toe split, and those can be perfectly integrated into any grapevine drill, for instance. Then we have the travel split, of course, on the toes, on the heels, or heel toe, and the turn splits with various degrees of turning. Like I said, playing around with tempo changes, slow mode, funky mode, super fast mode, it's all cool and fun. When you're an avid street skater like I am, an interesting topic is how to apply and integrate various split techniques into street skating skills. Of course, street skating adds an extra challenge and raises the bar in many ways. And that's why this split drill has the ability to prepare you for different kinds of situations. You learn how to control your role and maneuver fast and how to deal with different speed modes. Randomizing your split sequences prepares you for unexpected things that can happen and how to recover instantly from slight balance disturbances without panicking. Split sequences not only build strong legs and core muscles, they also make you super reactive. In the beginning of this video I mentioned how your feet are kind of stuck in your skate boot and that there is little wiggle room for the toes in terms of flexing and stretching like you normally do when you are on your feet walking, running and jumping around. This could cause some problems, especially when your posture on skates isn't addressed properly, usually resulting in too much leaning forward. Or when you don't really have an active lifestyle besides roller skating. When you're on your feet all day, with the right shoes, or you have a physically demanding job, you have to worry less, of course. But everything in life is about balance, right? So make sure to spend enough time on your toes, on a daily basis, Run around, take a sprint, play with the kids, chase the dog, put on some great house music and jump up and down, or whatever. Get on your toes and get that heart rate up. Just jack it up, it's gonna do you some good. One of my all-time favorites, besides running, is rope skipping. I've been doing that since I was about 8 years old, when I saw Muhammad Ali 
doing his magic in the ring, and I remember watching and just being mesmerized by his training regimen. He greatly inspired me to pick up different sports and particularly martial arts from a young age during the course of my life. And I still use the ropes today to warm up, to cool down in between. It's a great way to clear my mind and to focus as a form of meditation in motion. And it perfectly balances out my prolonged hours of skating. Well, that was all that I wanted to share for now. I know I mentioned a whole bunch of things that I did not show in this video, but I can assure you I will address all those topics in separate detailed explanatory videos. So stay tuned. Thank you for watching. Please stay safe and catch you on the next one.